As we begin to look there, I want you to really think about something that we ever won, we, we think about it, and we know for a fact, but does it really sink in? And I want us to realize this. There is a God in heaven. There is a God. And Daniel was one of God's greatest messengers and heroes, at, but yet he was one of God's messengers and God's prophets and God's preachers and God's leaders and God's forerunners and His messenger to the world. But yet people, they do not read the book of Daniel. Well, preacher, I don't understand it. Daniel is, if you'll just look at one verse of Scripture this morning, but I want to read a few verses of Scripture before we get to our text verse. In Daniel chapter number 2, chapter number 2, if you can stand in reference to the Word of God in honor to Him, stand with us. In Daniel chapter number 2, and Daniel was, it was in a time that Daniel was not yet known as we know him, and they did not have the book of God as we have it today. And Daniel was among the children of Judah that was taken captive. And how many really know the real names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You're going to know them right now. You're going to know them. And you can mark them in your Bible. In chapter number 1 and verse number 6, I want, you, I want to read you two verses of Scripture, verses 6 and 7. Now among these, now among these is what I'm talking about, among the children that was taken captive and taken and brought uh, into captivity, and now it says, now among these of the children of Judah, Daniel and Hananiah, Meshiel, and Azariah, or Az, uh, Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Baal to Shazer. And to Hananiah, Hananiah of Shadrach. And to Mashael he gave Meshach. And to Azariah he gave of Abednego. Now you know their names, don't you? You know what their real names were when they were yet in Judah. And now you know the names that were given unto them when they were taken into the land of Judah. All right, but now let's go over into chapter number 2. 
and they were they were down. They were taken into uh, uh, and and so old Nebuchadnezzar and he came to Daniel and he said, "Now Daniel, I, I'm I'm troubled. I'm really troubled with a dream." And he said, "I have." I have been, I've woken up and all of these, uh, my uh, astrologers and all of the people that uh, I've got, uh, they can't tell me, they can't interpret the land. And he said, uh, the interpretation thereof, he said, I'll give you, he said all of this, but he said, uh, the, all, all that I have, they can't interpret it. All right, but let's move on for the sake of time. And, uh, and he came to Daniel, and Daniel went in in verse number 16, and he said he went in and desired of the king that he would give him, that if he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. All right, now look in verse number 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known. All right, so what was he doing? He went to get him a prayer chain started. He needed some help. So he went to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He went to them and he said, Boys, he said, I need you to pray with me. I need, I need you to go to God. We need, we, I, need some, I need some help. I need somebody to scratch my back. I need somebody to get a hold because there's a God in heaven. Now, he didn't, you say, preacher, he didn't say that. Well, I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But he said, and he said that in verse number 18, that he would desire the mercies of God of heaven Concerning this secret. Now he's talking about the secret that Nebuchadnezzar had been dreaming about. And he said, and, and that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the men of Babylon. I want you to notice where they were at. Here is four men going to God. They're from Judah and they're down in Babylon, and they're taken there against their will. And here they are praying to God in a foreign land. And these, these folks in this land don't know God. They don't know God, and they don't know nothing about Him. But they know, Nebuchadnezzar knows that Daniel, he's heard that this man's got power. But he don't know nothing about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but Daniel does. Daniel knows about his companions. Do you know about all of these in this church? Do you know who you can go to in this church that can get a hold of God? Who can you go to and say, hey, there's a God in heaven. Let's get a hold of him. Let's, let's don't get a hold of his foot. Let's don't get a hold of his ear. Let's get a hold of God's heart. Let's get his attention. Let's, let's don't quit. Let's shake him up. What did old Jacob do down there? Boy, he got a hold of him, didn't he? He wrestled with him. And God said, turn me loose. He said, I ain't doing it. The old angel said, turn me loose. Uh-uh. He said, I ain't doing it. But he went around limping till he died. But he was blessed. Okay, but the thing about it, old Daniel, he answered, and look in verse number 19, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. But then I want, now I want to read for the sake of time our text. In verse number 28, and the Bible says, But there is a God. Woo! 
Can you say amen? amen? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, as we stand before you, God, as we stand before the, these children, God, that you have saved, and God, that are going to stand before you and before the judgment bar of God, lost or saved. God, they need to see the throne. They need to see the God of all. They need to see the God of mercy. They need to see the God that's going to judge them one day. Oh God, have your way today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now I want you to understand a few things this morning. As we look at this, I'll try to be as, as hurriedly as I can, but I want you to look at something. We see God in His works, everywhere you look, everywhere you look, folks, there's nature all around us. You can see God. You can see God all around Him. Uh, you know, a few years ago, there was a, a young lady in our life, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, she was a blessing. She was my wife's uh, brother's wife. Uh, and brother, she would call me. Uh, and Sister Linda, boy, uh, she would call me. Uh, and they played the song at her funeral. Uh, and the primitives has got it out. Uh, boy, and I'll tell you, uh, uh, there's God is everywhere. Uh, boy, he's all around me. Uh, and he's all, he would, she would sing that song. Uh, and boy, I'll tell you, she was a beautiful young lady. Uh, and she had cancer. Uh, but brother, I want you to know, uh, boy, she would talk about it. Uh, uh, God is everywhere. Uh, and you know, uh, she said, uh, uh, one day, uh, she said, uh, and, uh, I'll be standing uh, there by the banks of the river uh, waiting for you. I'll be reaching out to take you by the hand. Uh, and boy, I'll tell you, uh, one of these days, uh, brother, there's going to come a time uh, when you're going to lay this old body down. Uh, if a rapture of the church, uh, if a snatching away, uh, if a carrying away, uh, don't come if God don't call us up in the air. Uh, but brother, one of these days uh, we're going to leave here uh, because there is a God. Uh, and that is what uh, uh, God, uh, I mean, uh, uh, God came uh, and God came down uh, and he gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, and God gave Daniel an answer. Uh, and God looked, I mean, Daniel looked up uh, and in verse number 28, uh, and he said uh, there is uh, there is a God in heaven uh, that revealeth all things uh, there is a God uh, and I know uh, because he has revealed uh, this unto me uh, and we see God in the works uh, and we see God uh, in the word of God uh, in Malachi chapter number 6 uh, and I want you to look uh, if you want to turn you can uh, and if you choose not in chapter number 3 uh, in verse number 6 uh, he said for I am the Lord uh, and I change not uh, therefore you sons of Jacob uh, are not consumed uh, brother I want to tell you what uh, uh, brother uh, what he's talking about uh, all of the saved of God uh, brother we're not consumed of the world uh, why because of the blood of the Lamb of God uh, because of Jesus Christ uh, because of the blood uh, that was placed upon the doorpost uh, and upon the lintel uh, brother because uh, and God made 
made a promise uh, when he brought them out uh, right, that God would take care of them. Uh, and God made a promise to you uh, and God made a promise to me uh, that he uh, would take care of us. Uh, and where did he put it? Uh, he put it in his word. Uh, and God's going to take care of us because uh, there is a God in heaven. Uh, and not only that, uh, we have a witness uh, of God in the Word, uh, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, brother, I've got a witness. Uh, I've got a witness down in my soul. Uh, brother, I've got somebody uh, that goes with me uh, every day uh, and every night. Uh, when I lay down of a night, uh, brother, I don't have to worry about getting up uh, when I lay down, uh, if I don't get up here, uh, brother, I'll get up over yonder on the other side. Uh, there's somebody uh, uh, waiting for me uh, over there. Uh, why? Because uh, God said he'd never leave me uh, and he wouldn't forsake me. Brother uh, Daniel said there is a God uh, and he's in heaven. He's in the third heaven. All right, but number one, he'll strengthen his servant. In chapter one, in verse number 15, he'll strengthen you physically. I know we're living in a time. We're living in a time. Uh, right now, we're living in a time that we're not physically well. But the thing about it, he says... Uh, he said, and at the end, uh, he said uh, he needed some time to think about this. Uh, and he said at the end of ten days, uh, their countenance, uh, he wanted to try them. Uh, they put Daniel uh, and they put them uh, and they tried to feed them. Uh, and brother, uh, on no pulse, uh, uh, just uh, uh, brother, uh, the center part of an old weed. Uh, and brother, give them a little uh, bit of wine to wash it down. Uh, that was, uh, it wasn't fermented wine, it's just grape juice, uh, brother. But the thing about it, because the water over there is tainted, uh, it's got parasites in it, uh, and they couldn't digest it. Uh, but the thing about it was, uh, he said they'd done this for 10 days, uh, but at the end of 10 days, uh, listen, uh, he said their countenance appeared fair uh, and fatter in the flesh uh, than all the children which did eat uh, a portion of the king's meat. Uh, but old Daniel said, uh, I'll not drink your wine. Uh, I'll not eat your king's meat. Uh, brother, I'll not eat the trash uh, that the world eats. Uh, I'll not take... Uh, 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 what the world takes. Uh, other, I'm going to live for God. Uh, I'm not putting in me uh, what you all put in yourself. Uh, brother, I'm not walking the sinful life that the world walks. Uh, I'm going to live for God. Brother, you've got to come out separated. You've got to separate yourself from God if you're going to live for Him. Not only that physically, but mentally. Look at verse number 17. He said, For as for these four children, now Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, he said, God gave them knowledge. See, God gave you a brain. Did you know that? And you're supposed to use it. And he said, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning. A double L. All learning. He said, where there's little, there's little required. And where there's much, there's much required. God knows what you're capable of. And you're going to give an account for it. There's handicapped people, there's people that cannot learn, and there's people that can learn that will not learn. Well, I just don't feel like teaching in Sunday school. 
I don't feel like fooling with it, but my wife will. My daughter will. I'm just not going to be faithful to Sunday school. I'm just not going to be faithful to church, and I'm just not going to go. Well, one day you're going to stand before God and would to God you had. Are you saved? Oh, yes, glory to God. Yeah, hallelujah, I'm saved. Boy, go downtown and cuss like a mule. Let somebody jump in front of you. Let somebody get your parking place. Let somebody grab your buggy. Oh, dear God. Boy, can't we put on, I mean, we'll put on a different hat. But the thing about it is, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Uh, he had all the visions of God. Uh, he had his mind on God. He had everything uh, in a straight line uh, toward the throne of God in heaven uh, because he knew there was a God in heaven uh, and God was taking notes on all that he did. God knew what he was doing. And spiritually, he was purposed, because you look in verse 8 and 9, and he said, but Daniel purposed in his heart uh, that he would not defile himself uh, with a portion of the king's meat, uh, nor with the wine or the, which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Look at verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. God brought him into love and tenderness. And God put him in a place of shelter. Where did God put him? Right in the palm of his hand. Have you read the book of Isaiah? Oh, God had him in the rocking chair. Oh, Daniel, do you just stay in there? You just stay in there, Daniel. Oh, they're going to bring you a bag of tater chips and a glass of tea. Oh, they're going to take care of you. Oh, Daniel. Oh, just in a little while. Oh, say you'd like to have a taco. It's a coming. Oh, Daniel. Daniel, God had favor on him. Daniel loved him. Why? And Daniel and God loved him. Why? Because there was a God in heaven that he loved and God loved him. But the thing about it was, there was a God in heaven that wanted to show him his will. And the thing about it was in chapter number 2, look in verse number 30, uh, number 19. Look what he said. And he said this in verse number 19. And he said, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, that then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. He didn't run down there and say, Jake, I figured it out. Oh, Jake. Jake, did you hear me? I figured it out. But he wanted to say it loud enough that the whole church heard it. He wanted somebody to pat him on the back. He wanted... Jack gave him a pat on the back. Sammy, I figured it out last night. I stayed up till 12 o'clock and I figured it out. No, Daniel didn't figure it out. God blessed him and God related it unto Daniel. Why? Because there was a God in heaven that loved Daniel. There's a God that loved him and he gave the divine revelation unto Daniel. Why? Because Daniel loved him. And he had four men a praying to God. And he had three brothers over there. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were getting a hold of God. Boy, they were plowing the ground. They had hit a root, and boy, they didn't stop. They'd cut, they'd hook up the subsoiler and they'd bust that root and they'd keep it going. Boy, I mean, they'd keep it going. Uh, what are you talking about? He gave the divine inspiration. God would breathe on. Look in verse number 23. 
What is he saying here? In chapter 2, he said unto them, Daniel said, I thank thee and I praise thee. What is he talking about? He ain't thanking the three. He's thanking, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might and hast made known unto me what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. But he, uh, he was uh, telling uh, of them uh, and uh, praising God for relating unto him uh, and them uh, through the power of God, uh, through answering prayer. Uh, brother, listen, give God the glory. Uh, bless the name of a living God. Uh, give God all of the glory and bless his holy name. Brother, I'll tell you, that's what we need to do. And not only that, but he gave divine fortitude. Brother, to go ahead and carry it all out. Do you remember? Do you remember over in... I looked it up last night. 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 17. Oh, Elijah. Oh, Elijah got disheartened. Oh, oh, Ahab was after him. He was running and gunning after him. Why, old Jezebel, boy, when mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Oh, boy. And so, oh, boy, Ahab set out and he was going to kill old Elijah. No, Elijah, God sent him down to the brook sherry. Ravens fed him. Brook dried up. Okay. Lord God hit me. He left. And when he left down there, God hit me. I got to get this right. And he left that brook. And he went over there and he found the little lady, her and her son, the next time. And she was picking up sticks, her and her son. I had. They was getting ready to fix a little cake. A meal barrel was empty. That's what it was, okay? And the next thing, and he, they was getting ready, and oh, Elijah said, fix me a cake first. Fix me a cake first. She said, well, we, we just got enough. We're going to fix one cake, and we're, we're going to die. We're going to eat this, and we're going to die. He said, fix me a cake first. How many of you would do that? If I came to your house and you had one, one little hamburger, one little piece of meat, you'd give it to me and take a chance on letting your child die. Think about it. All I'd have to say is, well, God told you to feed me first. Let your child die. You and your child's going to die. But God said to feed me first and just try him. God said, try me. Let me show you what I can do. I'm a God up in heaven. And this is God's man. Feed old Dean. I don't care how pot-bellied and how tall and how freckled and how ugly, but feed him first. You know what she done? She fed him. And the word of God said that that, foot, that, is, that meal barrel never failed. It stayed full from there on. God filled that barrel. Elijah left. It wasn't Elisha. It was Elijah. Elijah went on down the road. And... He said before, met a, met, met a, uh, a lady, didn't have no kids. And she had been a friend to him. And you know, he said, you're going to have a baby. This time next year, you're going to have a baby. He come back by. And he, she ran up to him and said, my sins, you brought them back before me. 
and my baby's dead. It's laying on the bed dead. You've brought all my sins back before me. And God's killed my baby. God's killed my baby. He said, take me to him. Chapter 17 ain't a long chapter. He said, take me to him. Take me to him. I'm talking about the fortitude of God. I'm talking about God working. Because there is a God in heaven. He said, take me to him. He laid down across him three times. Just stretched out over him three times. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! Brother, I tell you right now, that oh, the breath came back in the body of that boy. He picked him up and took him back to his mama. How? Because there is a God in heaven this morning. There is a God, brother. You believe in God, there's nothing too hard for my God. Brother, my God can do. He can work. Uh, God can when you can't. God can move when you can't move. Brother, what I am talking about this morning, I'm talking about, we've just got a few things to go and I've got to hurry. Think about, there's a God in heaven to save the children. Look in chapter 3 of Daniel and verse number 16. And look what he said. He, how do you save? He saves by convictions. And he saves in the book of Daniel. He said he went, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, king, we are careful to answer you on this matter. They would not bow. They were not going to bow. They were not going to give up their convictions. Would you? Would you give up your convictions for the world? What would it take to give, you, give up your convictions? Go buy the lottery ticket. Go play the lottery. Go to gambling. Go to drinking. Go to sitting. Go to the ABC store and buy a fifth of liquor and think it's going to make your troubles just a little bit lighter. Oh, think about it. What about courage? Look at these boys, verses 17 and 18. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Look at verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that he will not, we will not serve thy gods. Notice that's a little g nor worship the golden image or the image that was set up by the Medes and the Persians. Buddy, that was a law that was written in stone that could not be taken down. And he said, which thou hast set up. Oh, it set it up and you're going to bow. And they said, no, we're not. God had just brought them through with Daniel and related unto them the interpretation of this dream. And now he wanted, he was going to have to kill them. Oh, think about it. They said, no, we're not bowing. We're not giving up. Oh, look in verse number 25. I'm talking about, I'm talking about companionship. I'm talking about being lost. And he answered and said, look what he said. He said, I, I, lo, I see four men lose. Men lose. I see four men lose. Oh, he said, and they're walking in the midst of the fire. They have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Oh, the form of the 
the fourth. Uh, oh, listen, uh, brother, you may be going through the fire, uh, but brother, he's there waiting on you. Uh, he's in the fire waiting on you. Uh, he's going to bring you out. Uh, the smell of smoke won't be on you. Uh, there'll not be a flame uh, about you. There'll not be a scorched hair. Uh, Brother, I don't have to go through the fire. I don't have to go in the fire. Brother, you don't have to bring me out of the fire because I ain't going in the fire. Why? Because the blood, the blood is going to bring me and keep me and hold me from going to hell. Brother, why? Because it will be, brother, the thing about it, the God in heaven will be in your fiery furnace. He will be there. When the, your troubles get so hot and so hot, heavy that you can't go and you, there's no way in this world that you think you can make it. Did you know God is in every book in that book except the book of Esther? But His power is in that book. The Word God is not in that book, but His power is. Oh, His power! There's power in the blood. Oh, that's power. There's wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, the last, listen, listen to it. The God in heaven does stand by His servant. Oh, what is He talking about? Look in chapter 10, at 6 and verse 10. Look what, I'm, what He is saying here. He said in chapter 6 and verse 10, And when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, and he went to his house, and the writing being, or the window being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times in a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a fourth time. They said, We're going to kill you, Daniel. We're going to put you in a den of lions. We're going we're to take care of you, boy. Oh, I'll tell you, the law can't be changed, but you can be challenged. And you can be done away with. Listen, the devil's going to try to do away with the church. The devil's trying to do away with the Word of God. The devil's trying to stop people from gathering. But the thing about it is, the, the, you know, the conserved servant. Over in the book of Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter, chapter number 1 and verse number 14, I want to read you something. In chapter Nehemiah, I, believe in, I had it marked. Chapter Nehemiah, if I can find it, right here in verse number 14. And brother, and I, I, you know, as we, as we begin to look at this thing, and we begin to think about this thing, and... We, we, we think, we think that we know. There are verse number four. He said, and it came to pass, not chapter, I mean verse 14, but number four. He said, and it came to pass. Now the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah had a wall to build. I'm going to put you, put you a little bit ahead of time. And it came to pass in Nehemiah chapter one, verse four. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down. Oh, it came to me. There was only a remnant left. Only a little remnant. All the walls were tore down. He couldn't even get through the city. And he said, the gates were burned with fire and all of this and got time to go through it all. That he sat down and he wept. He wept. I've sat down and I've cried over Mount Carmel why it ain't full. 
I've come right up here. I've come right up here and I've prayed and I've sat right there. Or right there, I don't remember which. And cried because this church ain't full. I've prayed and I've cried. Why we don't have a youth choir? Why we can't get them in? Why they won't come? God, I don't understand it. God, if you can fill up one church, God, why can't you fill up another? It's not wrong to ask God why. You say, preacher, it is. Show me in the Word of God. Take your Bible and just show me. Just show me and I'll repent. God said, Christ said before He died, He was our example. And while He was hanging on the cross, He said, My God, my God, why? Why hast thou forsaken me? Did He not ask why? He didn't ask for an answer, but he said, why? I'd love for God to tell me why this church ain't full. Why we don't have a youth choir? Why the young won't come? Why this community is drying up on God? But look what Nehemiah said in verse 4. He said that he went in, it came to pass when I had heard these words that I sat down and I wept and I mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before what? The God of heaven. I prayed. Where? There is a God in heaven. There is a God. I didn't pray before the deacons. I didn't pray before... The, lay, the members, I don't like that word lay member. I don't like nobody laying down on God. The thing about it is, he prayed before God. But you turn on over there and you're going to find out where God burdened him and brother, he got the people stirred and in 52 days, he built them walls. Why? Because the people had a mind to work. You've got to get a mind to work. One person can't do it. The people's got to have a mind to work. The people's got to have a mind to get the job done. But the thing about it is, a continual servant, 620, what does it say? Uh, 16, I mean, in verse number 16 in chapter 6. Listen to what the Word of God tells us. He said right here, he said, And the king commanded that they bring old Daniel, and they cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continue, he will deliver thee. He is making a believer out of him. Why? Because Daniel continually served God. And I'm finishing with this. There's secure power. There's secure power in the love and the power of God. Secure power. And what am, you, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 5, listen to what he says. And, and you know, and, and he tells us something here. And I won't have time to, to look at all of it, but and, uh, not Peter. Yes, uh, it's 2 Timothy, I mean chapter 3 and verse number 14. He said this, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowledge of whom thou hast learned them. Continue in the power and the love of God. Continue in them. Secure in His power, He's secure, safe in His promise. And I'm satisfied in His presence. When I'm in the presence of God, boy, I'll tell you, I'm satisfied. Old King walked out the next morning, and what was it he said? 
he said something there that really, really blessed my heart. And he got out there and he hollered out and he said, and the king rose up the next morning and he said, Daniel, he said, oh, and old Daniel said, oh, he said unto the king, oh, king, live forever. My God hath sent an angel and hath shut the lion's mouth. Let's stand. There is a God in heaven. Heavenly Father, Lord, I don't know what anyone needs today, but I know this. There is a God in heaven. Lord, as we said last night, yesterday evening, Lord, we begin to look, and Lord, we begin to pray. And God, as we begin to look in the Word of God, I begin to think about the ravens. The raven was a scavenger. He could have ate the food that you sent Elijah. Lord, that meal barrel could have stayed empty. And Lord, that child could have never got off of the deathbed. Daniel could have never came out of the den of lions. The lions could have had a feast upon that precious body. But there was a God in heaven. And there still is today. Lord, there's somebody today, God, that needs to come out of the den of lions. There's somebody today, Lord God, is fighting that battle. Somebody today, Lord, that needs to realize there is a God in heaven. There's a God that can deliver them. There's a God that can save them. There's a God that can lift them higher than hell can reach. Oh, there's a God that can, oh, can deliver them and give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, today, Lord Jesus, help them to realize there is a God. Thank you, Father, for all your love and your mercy. In Christ's name, amen.